So the Candy Creek project uh, started back in 2016. Uh, a group of growers here on the Fig Tree Creek catchment actually came to myself uh, and I was in contact with our principal researcher for water quality, Belinda Billing, at the time. Uh, and they were asking me about whether we could uh, look further into water quality uh, and the practices that they are doing on farm and what impact that is having on their local creeks. So back in 2016, uh, we wrote a little pilot project to get the project going. Since then, the project's actually grown quite a lot. Uh, we've received funding from the Department of Environment and Science. Uh, and since then, the project's grown to over 12 growers being in the core of the project, so involved in demonstrations and involved in the water quality science. Uh, as well as another 25 to 30 growers that are turning up to events that are being run uh, by the Cane to Creek project and also some training around nutrient management. So the Cane to Creek project is really about that refinement of nutrient management and also helping break down some of the barriers between growers and water quality science. We've got 10 demonstration sites looking at nutrient management uh, practices. These range from placement of nutrients, so subsurface versus surface application. Uh, as well as looking at things like mill mud and mill ash applications and what we can do with the nutrients that come from those. And a lot of our demonstrations are actually looking at uh, our plant cane crops after a legging fallow. So that was one thing that really stood out to us uh, when we first began the project. We asked some growers who were very interested to become involved uh, and started with a nutrient management plan to identify whether there were any places or any, anything we could refine in their nutrient management. Uh, and plant cane and accounting for nutrients from other sources was a really big factor in that. Yeah, it, it, it's, fa farmers learn more on their own farm. As it, it, it reinforces what we've learned in the workshops and the training and seeing in the magazines and everything else. So that way we are reducing our nitrogen and, and, and learning a bit more about our own soils. So within the Cane Creek project, uh, obviously we've got a, a cane aspect. Uh, this particular trial here uh, is one of our 10 trials within the project. Uh, but within those 10 trials, we've got four of those with in-field in water quality monitoring. So what we're doing here today uh, is installing our flumes to get a bit of an understanding as to what's coming off uh, in runoff. We know we've been looking at stuff at the bottom of the catchment and saying, hey look, there, there might be something in the creek here. What are the farmers doing? But the question from the farmers was, well, what's coming out of the rainforest to start with? Uh, we're up here testing to see what is coming out of that natural natural system so that when we get to the bottom of the catchment we can see what differences and what impact some of the farming may have had on that as well. And we're also taking samples progressively as we move further and further down the creeks to start determining as to what is making an impact if there is a change in that water quality. The whole idea around us collecting this water quality is certainly not around pointing fingers at growers, it's all about that conversation and our growers are actually now discussing this without us being involved. Real data and local data is meaningful. Um, modelling, um, what a computer will tell you, um, ra always raises a question. But when you've got the actual data in front of you that is real and you've seen it being collected and you know how it was collected, then it actually is meaningful. Uh, so what we've got here uh, is a real-time water quality monitoring trailer built by Bifmac uh, from the Vertican. Uh, we got this trailer built for the Candy Creek project uh, to help us uh, tell the story to our growers as to what's happening in the creek real time. So this bit of equipment here um, is taking a sample on the hour, every hour, uh, giving us a, a nitrate end reading as well as giving us uh, stream height and temperature in the creek as well. Uh, the real time data is really important to help us put some context behind what we're, we're seeing in the creek. We can actually see what's going on at a particular moment in time. I think we really need to um, get some real time, robust figures so that we can develop trends and um, do it over a couple of years, so a couple of cycles of wet season, so that we actually know and can prove to ourselves, I guess, that there is a contribution from what's coming from our, from our um, farming practices and to be able to quantify that contribution and then to develop strategies around how we operate our farms so that we can minimise runoff, which is also very good financially for us as well. It's interesting to find out the real facts 
what is actually coming out of our fields. There's a lot of scepticism about what we do and how we do it. So when we get, when we get some data down the track, we can modify our practices that we can actually uh, know that we're actually re uh, stopping runoff of nutrients into the, into the waterways. And the only way we're going to do that is to do this work with Cane to Creek, get some real data, sit down, have a look at it, analyse it, and then work out a, a method of uh, farmers adopting it. And uh, SRA is doing a good job of, of, of doing that uh, by, by having implementing this project and, and running it. And uh, then we can educate everybody where we're going with it. Because we are in a pretty sensitive area and of course we want to save the reef as well like everybody else. So I think that's what we're doing here.